This episode is proudly sponsored by Unity Media Network Cork, powering videos, podcasts, live streams, community events and more. Check them out on unitymedianetwork.com. Welcome to the Two Norries podcast. My name is Timmy and this is my co-host James. And today we have a special guest, Shane Sullivan. He's a PT tra- trainer um, in Holly Hill. Um, he has his own gym. And Shane is going to talk about how um, training and diet and everything else helped him to get over some mental health issues that he may have had in his life. So before we say any more, I'm going to introduce you to Shane Sullivan. Good man. Welcome to Churchfield Green, Shane. <laughs> How are you getting on, lads? Uh, thanks for having me on, anyway. No, we're delighted to have you on. I appreciate it. Yeah. Um, like, we know you well. We yeah. know you well. No, you'll be a friend of ours. Um, but for people that's watching and listening that don't know you from Adam, would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah, so my own name is Shane O'Sullivan. Um, I grew up in Courtham Drive in Ochnini, as, as you'd know. Um, I have, I suppose... I have two brothers and a sister, and I have half brothers and half sisters, but I'm not going to go into too much detail because we, we could get a few podcasts out of that. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, my mother reared us on her own growing up. There's me and my two brothers, Pan and Stephen, and uh, my sister, Elaine. So, and we all went to school in terms of Max Sweeney. Yeah. Um, I suppose that's where I got into the gym as a student doing P, which that's the gym now that I'm actually after taking over. Mm. Uh, which is a bit mad, like, do you know when you think about it? Yeah. Uh, and do you know when you were in school? Were you good at school or did you just like to do the active stuff or whatever it was, the, the academic stuff, yeah? Um, I liked the academic stuff. I wasn't very intelligent, but I was always hard working. Mm. You know, uh, I was never going to get enough points to get into the, do the courses that I wanted, so I was always going to be a kind of the longer road Yeah. for me. Sounds uh, like you were more practically based, so... You probably yeah. like working with your hands or, you know, it sounds like pretty much something like myself. Yeah. Like that, no, when I was a teenager, I kind of wanted to be a carpenter or work with metal or... Oh, I was always into the fitness. Um, I knew I was never going to be someone to go out and be a genius, like in go into science or be a doctor or anything like that. Mm. Although I thought about a few... I suppose you would have a thousand different choices when you're that age. Mm. Um, but it was always coming back to fitness, you know. So I was ac- I was actually a butcher from the age of fifteen. I'm um, I'm actually a qualified butcher as well. Very good. So <laughs> between being a butcher, doing security, uh, a paper boy from the age of fourteen, working in the off license, I may have to go through a thousand things, but it just kept creeping back into fitness. Yeah. Um. So you were always sensible, so you were always kind of chipping away at the old work. Yeah, I was always work like I'm. I was always working. I was always a hard worker, but I was busy. Mm. I suppose I was a busy fool more than anything else. I, m- I made all the mistakes you can make. Yeah. Uh, chopping and changing with jobs. Um, and for 10, in 2008, I went to Stefan Efe to do sports studies and I finished that. But as soon as I finished it, I got offered a full time job. I was in construction, I was laboring and stuff. The money was good. Then I got distracted. Um, by other jobs and getting into that comfort zone where like alright I have a job is paying the bills but I was never happy you know so yeah. um, around that time Shane in your life uh, we, was, were you having any struggles with, with mental health or, or with addiction or, or any of those sort of things yeah for me mental health was always creeping in like it's not it's mad because it's just like it's grown up in a house where you just have one parent it's a lot harder. It's like, it's, it's, it, to me, it's a bit weird up around there. It's like it should be acceptable because it's normal. Mm. We all, you should be used to a tough shit and get on, but like, that's, it's that's not right. that easy. And some fellas put on that face that like, so what, tough shit, we'll get on with it. Mm. You know, but that's not normal, you know that. It's not normal, yeah. I know that. But I know that's the that. way it was up there. Oh, I know it. it like, we, all, we all grew up in the same kind of, envi- yeah. similar environments, not the same. Um, but for me, there was I, I I used to bottle a lot of things up, and I would I would have gotten severely depressed a few times, especially around the age of eighteen, up until twenty three, twenty four. I could have went either way, you know. But you know, like just on that point, you no. Know, 
know, when you're 14, 15, 16, and you think you could go either way, but you started working. Yeah. When me and Timmy, his dad is, we started going down the other route. Yeah. You know, and what do you think? What do you think helped you kind of stay on the working route and stay on the path? Is there anybody that maybe done an intervention, or was there any U club or teacher? Or, or what? Why do you think? Because like we done a survey a few weeks ago, we asked people, you know, who would they like to have on the podcast, yeah. and they said, look, have somebody on from the area that maybe didn't go down the drugs and crime route, and that's doing well today, and kind of ask them why didn't they go down the drugs route? And they, so, what do you think helped you? For me, it was a few things. There was there was people that definitely helped me and influenced me. But for me, it was grow, growing up where there was a small like my mother worked hard for all of us. She done the best she could. Like she, and you know what? It's only when you get older and you have your own children you realize how much people are out the room for. But it's when there's that bit of struggle there. I always had that in my head that I'm going to make sure that I'm going to change this for me and my family going forward. But I suppose the people that influenced me would have been when I was eight or nine years of age, I joined up at Ogre Kirky, Froga. And uh, there was a few there was a few leaders in that group. John Kennedy actually been one of them, he passed away recently. So John would have been that fella, I think. He played a big factor in my life. Um just kinda of guided me and pulling me aside. He uh, just putting his arm around me whenever I needed it. He could see it when no one else could, you know that kind of. Um, that's so. that's someone like that is needed for every yeah. young person really, um that's going through any form of struggle in their life, yeah. whether it be at home or school. Yeah, I think the influence of someone like that has so many benefactors down the line. Yeah, but he, even I don't. I I'm just one person know that this man has helped. You know, anyone who who knows him, would tell it way he was. He sacrificed his own time for others. Um, yeah, and he actually only died in the last couple of weeks. Yeah, Sean. he died recently. It was at his funeral. Yeah. You know, it was a, uh, it was shocking news. It, it, it kind of hurt me, even now speaking about it. Mm -hmm. And as I said, the older you get, you, you get, the more you appreciate these mm -hmm. people. To, like to him, that might have been just a small thing. I was another fell in that group. It was a tiny thing, but to me, it was huge. And if you, you know? see, like. Do you know when he died, um, the funeral, I was at a guard of honour in Angus Street, you know, outside City Hall. Yeah. Crowds of people, ovation, he got uh, going, driving past in the horse, you know. Just make you think, like, you know, when you pass away, people don't care about the job you had or the amount of money you made or the possessions you had. Yeah. People only remember you for how you treated your fellow Yeah, it's a being. fact. It's a fact. Um, and a lot of the work that John done was voluntary. Like, mm -hmm. it's not like he was in a... Like, I, I don't know what the man was earning, but it's not like he was one of these fellas with loads of money driving fancy cars. And, and he gave 30 just, years to Cork City as well. Yeah, like he... um Football club. Yeah, he done the same thing with Cork City. But um but he had a big impact on you. Huge. John, Rose, Maeve, Merton. Um, they're all, like, a lot of people locally would know all them. So, yeah, and we had a nice tight group down there. There was a few lads and a few girls down there. and We all stuck together. They looked out for all of us. But... Um, yeah, like that definitely, those groups meeting up three or four times a week, going away in the summer to bring us down to West Cork, down to Skull Sailing, to so bring us to Garrettstown. Um, we'd have different events, we'd get involved in the parade every year. Mm. So just, just to have a good environment or somewhere that you can just step out of what was going on at home and just have that couple of hours, that, that few hours was just, yeah. it's it could be the yeah. best thing ever. Yeah, mm. it's, it's very important. Um, it shows the importance of youth work. It shows, it? it shows the importance of youth work, yeah, and just having that... Um, influences was or that one person and the feeling that I got off that and how he helped me and how I felt after it, I felt brilliant and I was like maybe what if I could do something like this what if I could be that one person that influences someone or helps them or motivates them mm. Um. so I, I was always thinking it didn't, like when I got older it was like between doing social work personal training and then there was a few other things floating around in my head like when you're young you yeah. th there's too many options mm. or, or sometimes there's not enough because you actually yeah. it's like it sounds like you had a good awareness even at your young age yeah. I did you like know, I, um, you know I try, know what you wanted to do in life you know yeah I, all I knew all I knew for sure that I just wanted better I'm grateful for everything I have but I just wanted better for my family 
and for me than what I had yeah. you're always going to want better like and I don't mean that in a bad way or speaking honestly that's all yeah so um, uh, and the same like I have two beautiful daughters and, I was there, and I'm going to make sure that they're not going to be short of anything and they're they're going to have everything they need yeah. uh, and just the, even for the two girls to see me when I go to my gym just to leave them come over in the morning to leave them see me open in the gym what they do leave them train away and mess around even see see me doing a bit of work with the books at home, which is something I'm brutal at, you know, just trying to yeah. um, doing all the paperwork for clients and all this stuff. I'll get better at that as well. But um, just, just, just so they can see how I work and, and you know, they can see the graft and the work at it. Yeah. And hopefully they can take that and think, all right, I can do this maybe in a different industry or whatever. Mm. Just, just to give them that, you know, monkey see monkey do, I suppose, in a way. You, you, that's a very very good point what you made there Shane because even in my own situation with me going to college you yeah. know and my kids being young and them looking at me going to college every day for it's six brilliant. years yeah. in their lives now they expect the exact same so when they leave school in leaving cert the next step for them is college yeah that, like my mother I remember my mother just hoping that one of us could just yeah they were leaving sort and none of us did in the end like but yeah yeah you know for me to see something like that in my own house um and know and the kids talking about college where they're gonna go no they're young but just to be able to talk like that it's, it's the same thing it's, it's unbelievable you're yeah. passing it on yeah. to your kids like right? and you know the way the impact you're having on your children now about showing them a, a work ethic and you, you could be your own boss and yeah. grow your business from scratch and Timmy then, you know, we're going through university and getting his degree and everything. I'd be thinking there, you know, I've no kids, like, but I wonder do my dogs look at me and imagine that going to Crofts or something, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not sure about that one anyway. Yeah, Jesus Christ, James, boy, he's a work ethic. Do you know why I think I'll go to Crofts next year? I'll go to Crofts. <laughs> Your dogs are too mad, but they wouldn't be left in the Crofts. You know, uh, <laughs> anything with the name Leonard after that. Be lucky though to, to get about. to the back park and black hole. <laughs> Ah, uh, stop! But yeah, <laughs> but you know, in your in your teenage years, then were you ever involved in any sports clubs, GA or yeah, soccer? Yeah, like I ever... played, I played a lot of soccer with New Farm. I would have been with Killerine. I would have been involved with Vincent for a while. GA was never my my favorite sport, but um, yeah, I I played a lot of soccer. I suppose, but I've a hip in, I've a hip injury since the age of sixteen or seventeen, where I've an imbalance and it just causes horrible pain. But I kept playing and playing. But I'm grateful for it in a way because it just pushed me more towards the gym training, um, which is what I do now and I love it. So like, even though that's a horrible thing to have, it pushed me more in this direction. And um, when all the lads were out playing soccer, I was down the gym like pumping iron. Yeah. Do you know? Um, and do you know when you and were it, was, it was a, it was a release for me. Yeah. Uh, I think that's the important thing of going to the gym for me yeah. as well. Is yeah, you want to feel good and you want to look good, but it's the release, did it relieve all that tension and aggression yeah. and yeah. pent up anger that you might have? But yeah. You know, when you were going through Stefan Efa, yeah, um, how was it like? Because like, we've been students as well. How was it financially? Was it tough? Yeah, and um, Stefan Efa, Stefan Efa is probably one of the cheaper and the easier colleges to get into. To be honest, when I applied for Stefan Efa, they refused me because there wasn't enough spaces. And Sheila Buckley, she was working in uh, Terence Maxweeney, a teacher, I'm not sure if she's still there. Um, and Mrs. Ryan, the principal, they asked me how did I get on, did I get in and did I get a place, and I didn't. So in fairness, they said, look, I'll leave it with us. Um, a day after I got a phone call, went out for the interview. Um, it was actually my first ever interview, I'm sure. And I went out and they were asking me, like, are you any good at swimming and... How many laps can you do? So I, I probably told them a thousand. Like, I couldn't do two at the time, I'd say. Um, so, the, so I went out, done the interview, and got out to Stefan F. It was brilliant out there. But that would have been one of the more affordable ones. But even at that stage, at the end of the second year, even though I was wor- I was working part-time, I actually used to walk out from Courtham Drive out to Stefan F. and tomorrow Road and walk home. But at the end of the second year, I didn't even have the money for... To collect my sorts, I just didn't have it. I thought I they were there waiting for me, but it actually took me a few months to get them. Mm. Maybe even a year. Uh, what age were you then? Um, I would have been around twenty. I'd say. Mm. Just old as you weren't long old school, so yeah, yeah. 
Um, do, you know what it, do you know what it shows? A really important sh- point. Like, you didn't... You, you'd walk from Knocknahini to Tremor Road. It's not a short distance. You're about six or seven K out and back. It's yeah. more You didn't have the money for the bus. Yeah, when it you was gradu- 40, 50 minute walk over and back, yeah. When you didn't... And it was raining most of the time, here, like. Yeah. When you, did, you, when you graduated, you didn't even have the money to get the sort. But you know what? You still done it. And you still got your qualification. It's yeah. first credit you to you there. And it just shows any young person watching will be using, you know, get rid of the excuses. If you really want it, you'll make it happen. Yeah. Um, like you can't leave what what's going on in your home or around you or other people's circumstances dictate yours. Um, you just need to make that choice yourself. If you want something, you'll get there. Because between uh, and if something goes wrong and it doesn't work out the first time, it doesn't mean it's gonna it's not gonna work out another time. Because I I went working in the leisure world when I was eighteen, eighteen or nineteen. I think I was only there now for a short time. And for me, it's just my experience down there, and it, nothing against it, the gym itself. My experience down there, sitting around and not being hands on and helping people, which is what I wanted. Um, that wasn't happening, so I got turned off it, and like that, I ended up getting the job on the building line and doing hundred different jobs in between, doing security for ten years, doing the doors and all that, standing in shops. But it took me from say two thousand eight, I started that course. 2007, 2008, and Stefanova. It took me until two years ago, the actually, or maybe three years ago, to decide, all right, I'm going to go back. I've done another course with image fitness just to upskill. Mm-hmm. Um, do you know what? And things get, you get a bit rusty and you forget what you learned and all that. Um, so I went back to uh, image fitness and only opened the gym up, when was it, April last year? So, like, there was loads of doubt and depression and a thousand different things going on in between but i got back there eventually so i always thought even at the age of 22 i was too late mm-hmm. the age of 23 i was too late like i've no hope no but there's always time where you're 30 40 50 if you want to do something you can do it exactly um but and and again if you have to take the long ra- long road around then like, so be it like what we did there yeah. was a guy in the college outside I think this is important to mention. There was a guy outside in the college, um, he would have been a class above me, and um, this guy was 60 years of age, and he was going on to do a study, a degree in construction management. Yeah. And a lot of people would have thought, what's he doing? Like, he's going to be retired in five or six years' time. Yeah. But I was so inspired watching this man work very, very, very hard just to get his degree and accomplish it, and... Just having a chat with him, then he'd start talking about what he's going to do with it. He's going to go out and he's going to try to get this job and that job and the other. And I used to be sitting back. No, one side of me was saying, Fuck it, who's going to employ him now yeah, at 60 yeah. years of age? Like, and there's not much. But the other side of me was just saying, Oh my God, like, this guy. It's is, a mentality. Like, it's, it's, it's unbelievable. Just, it's probably for him, it's just fulfillment and something that he yeah, achieved yeah. and something he always wanted to do. Exactly. Do you know, it's just that thing that he should have done and he never done, but. He's went yeah. fair play at the minute. It, the I, it's just going back to what you said. It doesn't matter what age you are. It doesn't matter what you have or what you don't have. If if there's something that you really want, mm. you will get it if you work hard enough for yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. And stay. Like it's, it's very easy to keep doing things when times are going well. But it's when times are tough and there's obstacles in your way, you just need to, that's where you need to kind of dig in and keep going. Mm. And obviously it's important then to have good people around you as well. So, have good people around you, but then don't let other people's opinions influence you too much either because there's so much negativity out there yeah. as well. So don't let other people get in their head in the same way. You, know? yeah, you, so have, you have to have your goal. Have your and goal. And along yeah. the way, expect bumps to come in the road yeah. and not to move off track. I was yeah. forever, in the, normally it was before I got myself together, I was forever starting stuff and just dropping out. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Just... <laughs> Just, just, that, just yeah. dropping yeah. out but then when I kind of got a bit mature or got my head together I was like Mama, I'm in this now for the long haul and I'm going to finish everything I start because my history of finishing things was not good and once you just set the goal by and you know when you're going through college or you're starting a new job or you're going for jobs and you don't get the job you, you keep trying yeah. to keep going yeah. the goal is always like to have a nice life have a better quality of life and that that's what we're all aiming for like yeah um 
Yeah, yeah, I suppose, you know, they say I'd rather shoot and miss than I shoot at all. Exactly. And I don't know, I don't know whose words there now. But yeah. go on, listen, um, right, go back a little bit there when you started. How, how did training and being in the gym actually help you get over your own kind of mental health issues, Shane? Well, for, first of all, I was just going training because I was always into muscles and all that. As a young fellow watching Van Damme now and all, the, all these fellas like to probably go to the kitchen and throw a few crazy kicks with the brothers. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I, I, was always in, I was always into that anyway. Do you know? Um, Rambo and all these fellas. <laughs> I used to be, I'd laugh and hear out to myself like, but if, if any of my own brothers are watching, especially Thomas, like, inside my house if we were watching wrestling or uh, Van Damme, no, or Rambo, yeah, like, I, crazy kid, I must have practiced that crazy kick. Do you know that crazy kick with what one mother, the hands up in the air yeah, on yeah, one leg? Yeah, yeah. I must have practiced that, practiced that. I must have been better at that kick than that that guy who played crazy <laughs> in the movie, like, and I swear to God, because I, I, I practiced it so many times and <laughs> Black Bill, Timmy. Well, I can't, you know, Jesus Christ. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, but that's brilliant. Like. I, was just, I was just getting a flashback there. <laughs> we were, like, watching Van Damme. And we'd all go up to the kitchen, me and the two boys. We have a sister as well now, like Elaine. But um, Patrick and Stephen were up in the kitchen, miss, and, and Stephen could swing his leg from, you know, one side right. to the other in two seconds. And Pat was taller, like bigger brother. He wasn't long getting dropped by the smaller brother, in <laughs> He kicked him straight into the Adam's apple. <laughs> Oh yeah, and you know he hit the deck, and he'd be like, "Oh, he didn't knock me down and all this." You know, it was a great crack. But um, yeah, I suppose getting back to what we ran about. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was just training first, like just, just you know, just to try to get bigger and stronger and yeah. get these muscles. But as I was getting older, when when depression was kicking in, um, and a lot of other things, I realized the the benefits of it then. If I stopped training, my head was gone. Mm. Do you know, if I if I stayed out of the gym for too long, my head was gone and depression was kicking in. And do you know, I I'd struggle sleeping and all these things. But uh, do you know, a comment a common thing with depression as well is, and there'll be people watching this that have depression at the moment. Yeah, is getting out of the bed in the morning. Yeah washing yourself, going about doing basic. It's just a big ordeal to do that. Had you got that as well? Um, or, from, like th- there was times where I didn't want to get out of the bed, or I like I could my sleep now was still bad. Like five or I I could get into bed at, at twelve o'clock and get up at five and I'd work fifteen hours. Mm-hmm. So my sleep it's getting better, but at some for years there I was sleeping two hours a night. A young fella sleeping two hours a night and you're training seven days a week. That's not normal. That because the so, mind is racing. So, so that's how I I actually ended up going to a GP years ago. Um. Uh, the mind was racing, could never sleep. Oh, I was worrying, like, oh, I was anxious, do you know? Um, where am I going to get the money for this? Where am I going to get the money for that? Do you know, will the kids be all right? Shit, what about in 10 years' time? Or 50, I was even thinking 20 years' time, like, how am I going to provide for them for college? It's expensive. How am I going to, do you know, all, all these things, were, like, it was just non-stop. It's like living in a state of anxiety. Yeah, yeah, but that's what it was. And I went to the doctors and... I was chatting away at the doctor and he was saying, I was just, I, I thought it was just all sleep. And he was like, how long are you like that? He says, years, probably since I'm a young fella, to be honest, a teenager. And he was saying, look, um, have, have you any, um, have you any, was your, was your childhood, was, was it normal upbringing? And I said, yeah, it was grand, like, it was perfect. And then he was like, and do you want to tell me a bit about it? And I says, look, I suppose I will. And, and I'll tell you what I told him. He was just asking me, so when I was about, tr- I, 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 we would have been around five or six, somewhere around that. And my mum and dad separated, he moved to England. So that's hard for any child. Of course. So I, he was gone a couple of years, then my mum met Eddie Keaton. He would have been, we used to call him dad. He, he'd know Eddie Keaton as well. Yeah. Yeah. Eddie would have been a friend of my dad's as well. Yeah. yeah. I know when we used to call him. So uh, we, all, yeah, we all lived in the same house and we, we grew up. You know, we classed him as our dad and Eddie's family then, this is where the stepbrothers and stepsisters would come into it. We all kind of lived in under one roof. But um, he got 46, then he passed away and he died. So that was two kind of father figures that were gone mm. in our lives and in my mother's. Mm. Shortly after that, then my mum had cancer and she was sick. Thank God, no, she's all right. So, um, you know, it was stressful times for the family as well. 
Well, um, so then your body just your because the all, 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 you know, it's true. All of this, I always felt like you're waiting for something bad to happen. Like yeah, yeah, you're waiting for the next yeah. bad thing to happen. But like. I took a lot of this on. Like we're all very close. Me, my brother, Fair, Stephen, and we're like we all look after each other. Do you know, um, but I took a lot of this. And myself, I just felt responsible, I don't know why. I just felt like I had to help everyone and I, I was kind of be there. And, I, it, it, you know, it was no one asking me to do it. Mm. But it was a lot of pressure and a lot of grow up. I think I had to grow up very fast. Mm. Mm. Um, I can understand that. Do you know, it's like you have to yeah. grow up a bit faster than... than uh, and that's why you were saying you seem to have your head screwed on. Mm. And I don't know if it was by choice. I don't know, is it just like... It's just your personality. Your like personality. Some, some people... In a situation like that, yeah, they can become a victim and they can maybe use a lot of drugs and, you know, feel bad. Yeah. And other people become the the, the fixer. And you're yeah. in, in your family, you would have fixed it, right? All right, I'm going to be grow up here you now and look after people to make sure everybody, yeah. everybody's all right. And you've been in that mode since then. Yeah. I was kind of worrying about making sure everybody's okay. Yeah. Um. It's like your role within your family, like. Yeah. And, and it, you know what? I think then sometimes it can nearly even become if you do it so often it's expected yeah. So when you do take a step back, it's like what the fuck is his problem? <laughs> you know when you're not running the race and but um, yeah, it's sometimes you have to take the step back for you your know, own. I did, for I, yourself, though. I did, I def, I definitely did. You know, there's only so much you can do to help people and like if you if you can't look after yourself and your own mental health isn't there, how, how are you supposed to help others? Um. Yeah, I had that so, same that same dilemma as well. Do you know when I when I came into recovery first, and I I was living out in Wilton in a house a house blanking assignment, and I stayed away from up here for a while, and I stayed away from certain people, and I was feeling like I was being disloyal, and I was abandoning them. But when I'm strung out of my head up here, I'm no good to nobody. And yeah, I, I have to take my step away from that madness, and I can help them from here. But when I'm in all that, I'm no good to anybody like that. Like yeah. So it's very hard when you're stuck in the middle yeah. to, to see what's going on. Sometimes you need to step out and look in rather than be in the middle of it, you know. Yeah. But, uh, so yeah, you, it's... Um, you had a lot of anxiety and, and yeah. so you went to the doctor. What was the doctor saying? So, yeah. so the do- yeah, we go back to that. Um, so the doctor was just saying, Shane, I asked you, I had your arm up bringing you told me, yeah. <laughs> it's the furthest thing from it, is what he said. So he was like, all right, fair enough. What, what to be, even though I felt depressed. But for me, like, I felt by opening up and actually admitting that you're depressed, it felt like a weakness, that you're weak. Yeah. And that you're soft. But when in reality it wasn't. It's a strength, isn't it? It, it, it can become a strength if you use it in the right way. Mm. Um. But that's what I'd say. If someone is feeling any, any of these symptoms, and there's a thousand other ones, what we were talking about, or if you're any bit worried, talk to someone open up you're not weak you're not soft because it was probably the bravest thing i ever done by actually coming out and saying it yeah. Do you know no at the time i i wouldn't even tell someone i didn't even tell people i went to the doctor that i was talking because I, I, they'd be saying what were you going for mm. Do you know and I, and I wouldn't even say oh my head is wrecked i was depressed do you know when I was actually going there from sleep? It's not something you say up around here, really. Like. It's not something you yeah. say, especially uh, a group of lads. Like, do you know, yeah. What? it's I swear, yeah, because you're with all the boys. And uh, do you know, I had brilliant friends growing up. I still do, um, but it's just not something you say. And I can guarantee, all the four group, a lot of the lads felt the exact same way as I did. Yeah, but it's not something you, as you said, it's not something you say in a group. No, it's masked with alcohol. And yeah, coke like for and me, stuff. yeah, it, like there's a lot of drugs as well brought into. Like for me, thank God. Um, I was around people that were taking drugs, and I it was you know drugs is very easy to access, especially you know up around where we grew up. Yeah. Um. But for me, it would have been drink. I was never an alcoholic. I was never someone to someone to drink five, six, seven days a week. But I could drink Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and be depressed for weeks and weeks and weeks. But I was only drinking to bottle things up, thinking it make me feel better. Uh. But even that alone, drink can be as dangerous as anything else. It, it, and it has a knock, it has a knock. It's, it could be the first mm. step to other things. Like some people, there's drink, there's coke, and then everything else on top of it. Mm. Um, I think the drink just kills people lo- in a longer period than, than some drugs because... In a like, wither away. Yeah, mm. it, just, it just takes you bit by bit, whereas drugs then will kill you. You can kill you instantly. It's harder, yeah. Do you know, by yeah. overdose or... 
Yeah. Uh, do you know? Yeah. Um, yeah, but it, it could really, it really could have went either way. And what was the doctor's advice? So the doctors, are like, I, I'm fair from an expert anyway, and I'm going to say this before you go any further, but the doctor was like, oh yeah, give me two seconds here, I'll write your prescription. And he was like that, he was, I was like, what is it? He says, oh, it's just something to help you sleep. I says, I don't want, I'm not, you know, like that, I, I don't need to take, I, I'd have to be in agony to take a painkiller, you know. Um, and I, I asked him, I said, what was it? He says, oh, it's only something to me, I'll just take that. He says, it will help you sleep. Um, so I went home and I Googled it. It was probably one of the strongest antidepressants that was on the market, like, mm. and I can't think of the name of it, no, to be honest. I was put on a, a tablet by the name of Sorlin at one stage, mm. all I was an antidepressant as well, it was for depression. Yeah. Um, but he gave it to me, I took it home, left it in the cupboard for a week or two, and I was kind of thinking, will I, will I want it, will I want it? And then I was like, do you know what? People in my family have had to take them. Friends had to take them. And a lot of the time, in my opinion, they're just giving up too free, too freely and too quick without thinking up, thinking of an alternative. Like, why couldn't that GP say to me, have you tried a bit of reading or a bit of exercise? Are you training? Is there anything else, you know, as an outlet that, that you could use as a form of helping yourself rather than just give this young fella a tablet? He didn't even know me. I was sitting down talking to him for three minutes. I know, but you know, four minutes. Research shows, you know, in around Ireland, each district is for the HSE purposes. Now, like each district, each each area has a district, and the district we're living in is Cork North Lee, north side of Cork yeah. City, Cork North Lee. Cork North Lee has the highest prescribing rates of tranquilizers than anywhere else in Ireland. I believe it. And it was a harsh tranquilizer. This fellow might just forgive me. <laughs> well, you're a house but, of a man. <laughs> <laughs> but um, but yeah. So I like I, I I left him in the cupboard, and I was debating: will I take him or won't I? Will I take him or won't I? At the same time, now, when this was all bad, my head was gone. Um, I moved to a house down in Fernie, and see, even saying this is hard, but there was a few weeks where I, I was suicidal. No drink or no nothing. Like, do you know? Uh, I was even thinking about how I was actually going to fucking kill myself. Yeah. It's normal. Yeah. That's normal. Yeah, and them thoughts, them thoughts were creeping in. Um, Again, like stuff building up and there was no drink. No, there was no nothing at this time. Um, But then I was kind of, again with the tablets, I was like, no, what, what aren't they doing? Like, what could I do to kind of start myself home? And I went back training and I just like, for a few weeks, I, I, I drove down to the gym, left my gear bag in the car and parked. And the gym now was my happy place, like it's my escape and I didn't want to go in there. So a few times I drove down, parked outside, left the gear bag there, sat down for 10 minutes, I'd say, nah, forget about the fuck this, I'll leave it off, drive off. i have done that loads of times, and once I got back into it, the gym then, it was like, I was starting to feel happier. I was sleeping a little bit better, I started eating better. Um, me being happier then the people around me are happier it's a knock on there's a knock on effect obviously if you're not yourself uh, like as I said if you can't help yourself you can't help anyone else but uh, yeah it was just a, it was just a pure release uh, and then at this point I suppose no it's good it's, it's brilliant to look good and look in shape but to me that's just a bonus like you know um, it's the most it's, important thing for you is what you're what you're after what you'll get what it's doing for you mentally mentally you know yeah. at this point well, if it's mentally and obviously I, I like to be in shape as well do you know practice what you preach I, I am a personal trainer I'm trying to motivate people and do you know lead by example and all that yeah but again you don't just go like this is what I want to say the gym is not just for bodybuilding and looking good and having six pack or it, it, like for some people it's everything but for others it's nothing like if you take, I, if I I've cleaned up in the gym. Um, for like some of them are ripped, some of them are eighteen stone. Like you can have a fella that's eighteen stone there, and he's the happiest man around. And you can have a fella that's ten stone, shredded, looks unreal on the weekends or on his hol- on, on his holidays with his top off, and he can feel miserable inside. So, uh, I'd recommend any anyone with mental health issues. The thing with training and with the gym is. You don't have to be an expert at anything. You don't have to be fast. You don't have to be good at football or hurling or basketball. Anyone can train in the gym. 
any you know and and you can learn obviously there's different levels of of uh progress and of training and all that but any anyone can do it uh, and and it's very i suppose for me it's, it's a zone i'm comfortable in walking into a gym where there's people in their training uh, and i understand that people get intimidated going into a big gym fellas with muscle tops um, fellas grunting in the corner do you know the, these big gyms um, of course it can be intimidating if you never went in it's like your first day in the job or going into school your first day in school it's, it's that kind of feeling that you get but that's the environment I, I, I try to uh, like James you've been up there that's the environment yeah. I, I try to have is to take that out of it more relaxed smaller numbers and they're, they're like all the clients have a band they all know each other everyone is chatting away it's relaxed um, and, and it should be and like that now it should be a place where you're not just coming to train but you're coming to socialise as well and it's your break away from work do you know it might be a break away from the kids some people only get three hours a week to themselves and if it's up in the gym then so be it exactly I think, and if they're happy leaving there yeah. I think gyms like that are becoming more popular because people are seeing more personally uh, yeah. yeah and people are starting to see that they can benefit more from a gym that's more kind what's, what's the right word family orientated yeah, or, yeah. Do you know where it's nice and simple everybody's there just to get in shape look after themselves and it's about the social aspect as well of just having yeah. a bit of a banter and, and a bit of crack yeah you know and you're yeah. under no pressure to look like instagram model yeah. right no. fat burner things no uh, it says me know whose pictures myself i done a photo show recently now pictures of. Of, but that's just Still. me promoting me and my my business and but it's not just about that. Like if you look through my pages, all different characters, all, all different people there. Exactly. All different goals. So if you want to come in and get ripped, I'm going to, uh, do you know, we'll go for it. If you want to come in and just do your session and you're happy with that and you don't care, give a shit if you lose weight, put it on, take it off. That's all right as well. It's for everyone. And for me, it was about, um, I got into bad habits during COVID. You know, with obviously the gyms were closed and it was unlimited work at home and eating habits and I'd, I'd been training for a long time, but I'd never yeah, done... Yeah, you were always in decent shape when yeah, you were growing up. But I'd never done personal training in my life. Mm. So, like, it's not as if I needed somebody to show me what to do. I just needed somebody to push me. A shoulder, yeah. Yeah, do you know what I mean? And I love it. I've been doing it with you know, for the last seven weeks. I lost a half a stone. I, and it's about... I didn't want to be ripped you know, or anything like that. Yeah. I just wanted to be healthy. Yeah. And, like, you know, just... Lifestyle. Yeah. You know, no it, quick fix. It is. And, like, for... Like, it's not a chore for me to go training. I fucking love going training. And I do yeah. with my wife. We do it as a couple. Yeah. And we have chats with yourself up there and your staff and your other clients. And it's just a nice atmosphere. And you're supporting somebody local. It's just a positive thing to do. But something I was going to say earlier on. Um, do you know if you take a drug or an antidepressant or a tranquilizer or a Xanax or anything like that, it's it's just a chemical. It's What it does, Jez, is it activates chemicals in your brain the serotonin the dopamine all these chemicals yeah. that make you feel happy exercise does the exact same thing yeah and like it's you'll natural ne- you'll never go in like you go into a gym in the foul humour and I I often went into your gym now you like, didn't want to be there last week uh, yeah I didn't want to be, I'd rather it. be anywhere now than go to the gym but because I was training with my wife she dragged me up and then they're like a demon I come out there by whistling <laughs> yeah. it's the same thing what, is, what yeah. a, a, a volume would do it was a good session yeah. and, and then like you just said this is a benefit now of training with someone, training with your partner, training with your friend. A day you didn't want to go, she was like, probably James, get up off her ass, we're going. Another day, my, she probably didn't want to go. Exactly. A few weeks ago, she wasn't in the mood, you dragged her up. So, like, people kind of bounce off each other that way as well. It's, it's good. good to, it's good to burn off a bit of energy as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Isn't it? So, you said a while ago, you were sleeping better after the gym. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a great way to burn off an extra bit of energy. And when I was... I remember when I was in prison, I was speaking to the psychologist um, that was inside that I was working with inside her. She used to always emphasize the importance of going to the gym just yeah. to burn off that little bit because it, it, it it's like it's, it de-stresses you a little bit. You know what I mean? Yeah, um, and it just it just kind of clears the head of it. Do you know something stupid that might have been annoying you? You like. I, I just think a lot of stuff makes it disappear. Do you know, stupid yeah. things that would annoy you come out feeling better with a clear head. You get a bit of perspective, don't you? Yeah. You, think it's yeah. Like that. you just get a breather and you're like, yeah. why was I even bothered? Yeah, it's not that important. Stupid. like yeah, it's not important. Like, um, And the eating healthy part of it as well. The eating healthy, 
is is a ver- like you wear what you eat, and I believe that like if you eat shit rubbish constantly and you constantly do it, and you're wondering why you're sluggish during the day and your energy levels are they're up and they're down and your sleep is all over the place, you're getting acid reflux, you're constipated. Do you know what? You can't fit into your clothes. There's only one reason that's happening, Mick. It's poor food choices. Um, and the other thing is people go too extreme with their diet and then. So they're very extreme with their, you know, eating the same food all the time. And then what happens is you're, you're going to be spot on for six weeks and then you're just going to go away and binge, eat all the same crap and you'll put on all the weight you've lost and you'll gain more. Mm. So it's about getting a balance somewhere in between where you can enjoy your food. Do you know, and, and learn learn how to make these choices yourself. I, I, I try to guide people. A lot of my clients now, for six weeks or eight weeks, I'd have to coach them with their food. But now they're able to do it. I try to make it a lifestyle. Make it based on lifestyle decisions. Lifestyle, yeah. and, and even if, if you're, say, in your 30s and you have kids at home, if you're eating shit there's a, and rubbish and unhealthy foods, there's a very good chance that you're feeding, them, feeding it to your kids as well. So that's their health you're messing around with. Mm-hmm. Whereas if you're making these choices, proper choices, uh, and, and make them more normal, you're going to feed the whole house with the same thing. Hope, do you know, that's what you'd be hoping. Oh, that's that's true. True. So, so, so mm-hmm. It's something you need to carry on. Like I, I've had people who brought kids up to me, 12 and 13 years of age. I don't know how strong him. He's very heavy. Do you know, he, he he's a big young fella, like. It's the sugar, like. like. Yeah, yeah. We uh, look at the adult and they're probably the same. Yeah, yeah. and a lot of them are. And I'd say... All right, is he working? No, she's only 12. So who's doing the shopping? Yeah. Like, so these people are bringing the food into the houses as parents. It's just a lack of awareness. It's a lack it? of awareness and they need to be educated. Uh, yeah. We Everyone needs to be educated. But like you've said, a lot of these, a lot of the children that are like that and obese are overweight, there's a, ch- a good chance their parents are the same. Yeah. So it's up, it's up to the likes of me now. And then another fella, local fella, Mark Tynan. Yeah, you know, yeah. He's done well and, he and glided for him. So it's up to the likes of us to, um, to kind of speak up and, yeah. and just try to educate people. Mm. Keep it simple. Don't complicate things. Like pe- People don't want to be going into the science of food at all. Yeah. Just keep things very simple. So, I, sp- I suppose you made a great point there, right? Um, for instance, if you can really educate the parent that yeah. is struggling with obesity, right, and the child, if that parent starts changing their diet and eating some healthy foods and whatever, a little treat here and there, it, it, you know. Yeah. But if they start, I guarantee this, the child as well will start losing. I'm saying this now because I've only started that myself. Yeah, it's a fact. Eating healthy my own. Yeah. At home myself. And I'm noticing my kids are eating more healthy food. I stop. You know, it was. I'm. Do you know what that word diet? I fucking. Yeah. It's, I just don't like that word it, it, because di- like there's di- a, there's an end to the diet. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. But you know that's why I try to make more of a life lifestyle choice. Do you know it's something you want to do for the rest of your life, not for six weeks. Like I'd be delighted if someone came up to me, and they're only with me for eight weeks, but they had the same habits uh, and way of doing things. Mm-hmm. If they didn't come back to me at all, but if they looked the same way and I'd say, how are you getting on? And they just kept those habits going. Do you know what that means? I'm after doing something right. But like we're on about food. It's the same with food. It's the same with you sitting down studying and your kids looking at you. They're going to study. Mm. I'm sitting down at home and I'm, and I'm doing up diet plans. My daughters are writing down diet, writing up their own diet plans sitting next to me. Mm. It's the same with food. You don't make the right choices with food. They're going to do that. If you have a good work ethic and they see that, hopefully they pick up on that. So it's like a knock-on effect. It's not just with food, it's with everything else. No. So, That's uh, really you know, true. Uh, it carries over. Uh, and there's consistency in doing everything then as well. And when it, when it's not a diet for six weeks or 12 weeks, when it's a lifestyle choice, you can still have your cake. You can still have your bar of chocolate, yeah. your takeaway. Go, go out on your in, weekend and go for a meal with the yeah. missus or go for a family meal. Do you know, in it's general, that I encourage some yeah, of my clients exactly. to like, I give them a plan as a guideline. Look, if you want to mess around with this, is just a guideline, and we'll work off this. And some of them are like, they'd stick to it for eight, and they're like, no, I'm not going out, I'm not going off it. I said, look, relax a small bit. Like, you're, you're not going up on the stage in front of anyone. Do you know, you're not competing, you're not going to be on a magazine, unless they want that, then I'd be the first one to kill, you know, give out to them if, if they wanted to be strict, I'm strict. But um, I'd say, go out now, look, the last four weeks you're after giving 100%, go out and have a meal, go out and enjoy yourself. 
and get back on it then because mentally it's just a break from what do you know just from what you're doing yeah do you know if somebody comes into you shane the spot limit obesity depression poor mental health all these things and they're in with you and you're training them and they're doing well they're thriving they're losing weight they're feeling better more confident i say it gives you great job satisfaction does it it's the best feeling in the world to me it is um i've had clients that come in to me and if you in particular i don't want to be naming them now yeah. but um that that came in to me suffering with depression didn't know what they wanted to do at work felt like quitting wouldn't go out on weekends didn't feel comfortable in their clothes and it's just a few months of training it's mental just show up in the gym and the confidence you get from that from looking better and feeling better um it, it, it kind of rolled on to other parts of your life like you feel better in work you, um do you know people feel better in college it, it, it's just mm. the benefits are unbelievable um, yeah but i do i get messages of thanks I, I i've got people that message me to like that they were suffering with depression and training and what i was doing with them they even they even said that you know they reckon that i, I could have saved saved their lives do you know what to me you know like it's a, for, for me saying this you can say that out I, loud yeah you know and, I, and i don't i don't want to say it being cheesy no like, but you can say it out loud and i don't want to say the arrogance of being cocky but yeah. you know when, when you re- open that message yeah. it's, it's the nicest feeling ever of course that you're that you're that person that was that we were like john john kennedy will go yeah. around about him we've had a positive effect he was on that somebody. my he was that person for me and i'm able to be that person for a couple of people and i hope i continue to be that kind of person going forward yeah um and yeah not- but the feeling that feeling of being able to help someone i feel by helping other people i'm helping myself there is a know? saying in recovery we only keep what we have by giving it away. Yeah. And you keep your your mental health, your positive mental health yeah. by helping others because it makes you feel yeah. good. You're doing a good deed. But like so many of my clients, they thank me for helping them, but they have helped me as well a lot more than they than they can imagine. Uh, do you know, like you go up, you're not just a see personal trainer. People say, think you just go up and you're a trainer and you train them that's it, get them in, get them up. But the word personal should mean something. You should know your client. If your client comes in the door and they're in bad form, you should know they're in bad form. Do you know? Sometimes I've had clients that come in and they might not even want to, they might not even want to, or be in the mood to train. I'd say, sit down on the bench there. We'll just have a chat. You're, a, men- for, you're a mentor as yeah, well. Yeah, chat for 40 minutes, 45 minutes. There's no problem. Relax. You don't have to train. Or else you can give them the option. Do you want to talk for five minutes? You can head off, come back and you're feeling better. So like, you're kind of, at times you can be a counsellor, do you know, uh, and like I, I sit, if someone wants to sit down and talk, I'll talk, like it's not an area that I'm, as I said, I'm not an expert that if I can help someone in any way, I'll try to do it, and all you but like that, likewise, yeah. I, I have clients there now, uh, and they have helped me a lot as well, and Paul Morris would be one of them, I hope you don't mind me mentioning his name, Um, Paul, you might see my page, he's down, like there's not many stories run over at this felt that we're, we're going to share a video actually in the next few months about his his own journey but paul is down over 40 kg that's unbelievable do you know um he went from struggling to walk getting up the stairs in the gym and now he's probably the fittest man in the class is there like something else that's and there's a lot of other amazing things now happening with him he's going he's going back to college and do you know things that he was kind of holding back on a bit do you know so if it, paul if you're watching uh I'm sure well, he no, is. I'm, I, I'm proud, yeah. Yeah, yeah. and we so, are. And we he's are just yeah. like you, you would have. You probably would have seen Paul yeah. above in the gym. Um, he's just one of many, you know. And I'll probably get killed by the other clients. Why aren't you on about me? <laughs> yeah, he just, he just want just one story. Um, if you look up my page and yeah, what's your Instagram? Post, what's your Instagram called? It's uh, Shane Soul Fitness on Instagram. And where's your gym based? Uh, and on Facebook, so I'm based up upstairs in Terence McSweeney's Sports Hall in Achnahini. In Halil, yeah. It's oh, just yeah. behind Terence McSweeney. Yeah, and if people mm-hmm. want to get in contact with you, they can through yeah. social medias and yeah. Facebooks and stuff. Yeah, that's brilliant. That's for any level, in there. I know. Look, you spoke very well. You represented yourself very yeah. well, and um, we're proud. You have, you know, who you be. You're a very positive role model in the in the neighbourhood, in the north side. And um, thanks for coming on the podcast. We yeah, appreciate thanks it. for having me, boys. I appreciate no, it. Thank you, thank you. We we need more people that um, 
that can can help people in a way you are like mm-hmm. you said yeah. Mark there yeah, will go on we know Mark as well Mark yeah. is a, another nice guy and he does yeah. a lot of the same stuff you yeah. do yeah. and um and if it's important that we stick together as uh, well uh, yeah um and you know try, as you said help as many people as we can and mm-hmm. even if people want to there's so many different ways James of helping yeah. people in there what there is and if people you know, learn from around here I can put them in contact with you and you'll know somebody in their area. Yeah. And, yeah. There's, and no, there's, like, there's always a way of helping someone. If you don't know someone, someone else that you know, you know someone exactly. like it. Exactly. So thanks again, Shane. Thanks, thanks for having me, Lance. Not a bad all. I appreciate and, it. And um, do you want to close, Tim? Um, yeah. Jesus, I just want to say thanks again to Shane and James, my co-host, and we'll see you next time. See thanks you later, lads. Bye-bye.